reading through the Bible in one year. November 27th, 1 Chronicles 23, 1 Peter chapter 4, Micah 2, and Luke 11. When David was old and full of days, he installed his son Solomon as king over Israel. Then he gathered all the leaders of Israel, the priests and the Levites. The Levites, 30 years old or more, were counted. The total number of them was 38,000 by head count. Of these, David said, 24,000 are to be in charge of the temple, or rather of the work on the Lord's temple. 6,000 are to be um, officers and judges. 4,000 are to be gatekeepers. And 4,000 are to praise Yahweh with the instruments that I made for worship. David uh, then divided them into divisions according to Levi's sons, Gershom, Kohath, and Merari. The Gershomites, um, Laden and Shimei, or Shimei, Laden's sons, Jehiel was the first, then Zetham and Joel, three. Shimei, or Shimei's sons, Shelemah, Haziel, and Haran, three. Those were the heads of the families of Laden. Shimei's sons, or Shimei, Jehath, Ziza, Jeush, and Bariah. Those were Shimei's sons, four. Jehath was the first, and Ziza was the second. However, Jeush and Bariah did not have many sons, so they became one family and received a single assignment. Kohath's sons, Amram, Izhar, Hebron, and Uziel, four. Amram's sons, Aaron and Moses. Aaron, along with his descendants, was set apart forever to consecrate the most holy things, to burn incense in the presence of uh, of Yahweh, and to minister to him, and to pronounce blessings in his name forever. As for Moses, the man of God, his sons were named sorry, among the tribe of Levi. Moses' sons, Gershom and Eliezer. Gershom's son, Shebuel, uh, was first. Eliezer's sons were Rehabiah first. Eliezer did not have any other sons, but Rehabiah's sons uh, were very numerous. Izhar's sons, Shelemith was first, Hebron's sons, Jeriah was first, Amariah second, Jehaziel third, and Jechmiam fourth. Uh, Jechmiam fourth, there we go. Uziel's sons, Micah was first, and Isha, uh, Ishiah second. Merari's sons, Mali and Mushi. Mali's sons, um, or Malai, Mali, one of those two, um, Eleazar and Kish. Eleazar died having no sons, only daughters. Their cousins, the sons of Kish, married them. Mushi's sons. Excuse me. Mali, Adar, and Jeremoth, three. These were the descendants of Levi by their ancestral families, the family heads, according to their registration by name in the head count, 23, sorry, 20 years old or more, uh, who worked in the service of Yahweh's temple. For David said, Yahweh, God of Israel, has given rest to his people. He has come to stay in Jerusalem forever. Also, the Levites no longer need to carry the tabernacle or any of the equipment for its service. For according to the last words of David, the Levites twenty years old or more were to be counted. But their duty will be to assist the descendants of Aaron with the service of Yahweh's temple, being responsible for the courts and the chambers, the purification of all the holy things, and the work of the service of God's temple, as well as the rose of the bread of, uh, of the presence, the fine flour for grain offering, the wafers of unleavened bread, the baking, the mixing, and all the measurements, or all measurements, of volume and length. They are also uh, to stand every morning and give thanks and praise to Yahweh, to, excuse me, to, to Yahweh, and likewise in the evening. Whenever burnt offerings are offered to Yahweh on the Sabbaths, new moons, and appointed festivals, they are to offer them regularly in Yahweh's presence, according to the number prescribed for them. They are to carry out their responsibilities for the tent of meeting, for the holy place, and for their relatives, the descendants of Aaron, and the service of Yahweh's temple. Let's move on now to 1 Peter chapter 4. Peter continues, Therefore, 
Since Christ suffered in the flesh, arm yourselves also with the same understanding, because the one who suffers in the flesh is finished with sin. In order to live the remaining time in the flesh, no longer for human desires, but for God's will. For there has already been enough time spent in doing what the Gentiles chose to do, uh, carrying on in unrestrained behavior, evil desires, drunkenness, orgies, carousing, and lawless idolatry. They are surprised that you don't join them in the same flood of debauchery, of wild living, and they slander you. They will give an account to the one who stands ready to judge the living and the dead. For this reason, make sure we don't lose notes here. For this reason, the gospel was also preached to those who are now dead, so that, although they might be judged in the flesh according to human standards, they might live in the spirit according to God's standards. Now, rather not now, moving on to, to verse 7. The end of all things is near. Therefore, be alert and sober-minded for prayer. Above all, maintain constant love for one another, since love covers a multitude of sins. Be hospitable to one another without complaining. Just as each one has received a gift, use it to serve others as good stewards of, of the varied grace of God. If anyone speaks, now that this gift that was received, these are our gifts from the Holy Spirit. You can read more about this in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 12. If anyone speaks, as in speaks, uh, sorry, I'll just let it read. Uh, let it be as one who speaks God's words. If anyone serves, let it be from the strength that God provides, so that God may be glorified through Jesus Christ in everything. To him be the glory and the power forever and ever. Amen. Dear friends, don't be surprised when the fiery ordeal comes among you to test you, as if something unusual were happening to you. Instead, rejoice as you share in the sufferings of Christ, so that you may also rejoice with great, with great joy when his glory is revealed. If you are ridiculed for the name of Christ, you are blessed, because the spirit of glory and of God rests on you. Let none of you suffer as a murderer, a thief, an evildoer, or a meddler. In other words, if, if you are an idiot, and if you act like an idiot, and, and you are um, chastised by people who are not Christians because you're being an idiot, congratulations, you've earned an idiot's reward, but this isn't because you belong to Christ. If you cut someone off on the highway and you assume that they're, that they're angry and honking at you because of the Jesus fish on the back of your car, I can assure you they're not doing it because they think you're a Christian, but because you're an idiot. Now, they might be layering on top of that the fact that you're being a hypocrite, putting yourself first instead of those around you, putting yourself... Um, First, in, in the way that you drive, cutting people off and just in general being rude, endangering the people around you through the way you're driving. When you have a, an ichthus, a Jesus fish on the back of your car that tells everybody, I'm a Christian. I follow Christ. If you want to know more about Christ, follow me. So that's why it says, let none of you suffer as a murderer, a thief, an evildoer, or a meddler. So it starts off with murder, and then it goes all the way down to meddling. This isn't a, a, a chart saying, this is the worst thing you could possibly do, and this is the least worst thing. No, it's saying, don't do any of these things. The world condemns these people, so don't do those things. Verse 16, but if anyone suffers as a Christian, because you're a Christian. Let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God in having that name. As in having the name of Christ applied to you. For the time has come for judgment to begin with God's household. And if it begins with us, this doesn't start off in far-flung places. In the tribes of Oingo Boingo, wherever they happen to be. Judgment starts by from, from God, it starts within the church. 
and then it goes outward. And if it begins with us, what will the outcome be for those who disobey the gospel of God? And if a righteous person is saved with difficulty, what will become of the ungodly and the sinner? So then, let those who suffer according to God's will entrust themselves to a faithful creator while doing what is good. Let's move on now to Micah chapter 2. Woe to those who dream up wickedness and, and prepare evil plans on their beds. At morning light they accomplish it because the power is in their hands. They covet fields and seize them. They also take houses. They deprive a man of his home and a person of his inheritance. Therefore, Yahweh says, I'm now planning a disaster against this nation. You cannot free it from your necks. Or rather, you cannot free your necks from it. Then you will not walk so proudly, because it will be an evil time. In that day, one will take up a taunt against you and, and lament mournfully, saying, We are totally ruined. He measures out the allotted land of my people, how he removes it from me. He allots our fields to traitors. Therefore, there will be no one in the assembly of Yahweh to divide the land by casting lots. Quit your preaching, they preach. They should not preach these things. Shame will overtake us. House of Jacob, should it be asked, is the spirit of the Lord impatient? Are these things, uh, sorry, are these the things he does? Don't my words bring good to the one who walks uprightly? But recently my people have risen up like an enemy. You strip off the splendid robe from those who are passing through confidently, like those returning from war. You force the women of my people out of their comfortable homes and take my blessing from their children forever. Get up and leave, for this is not your place of rest. Because of defile, sorry, because defilement brings destruction, a grievous destruction. If a man comes and utters empty lies, I will preach to you about wine and beer. He would just be the preacher for this people. Again, they're longing for that they have itching ears to hear things that they want to hear, not what God has to tell them. Verse 12, I will indeed gather all of you, Jacob. I will collect the remnant of Israel. I will bring them together like sheep in a pen, like a flock in the middle of its pasture. It will be noisy with people. The one who breaks open the way will advance before them. They will break out, pass through the city gate, and leave by it. Their king will pass through before them. The Lord is. Yahweh as their leader. Now Luke 11. Jesus was praying in a certain place, and when he finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray, just as John also taught his disciples. So he said to them, Whenever you pray, say, Father, your name be honored as holy, your kingdom come. Give us each day our daily bread, basically take care of our daily needs, and forgive us for our sins, for we ourselves also forgive everyone in debt to us, and do not bring us into temptation. He also said to them, Suppose one of you has a friend, and goes to him at midnight, and says to him, Friend, lend me three loaves of bread, because a friend of mine on a journey has come to me, and I don't have anything to offer him. And he will answer from inside and say, don't, don't, don't bother me. The door is already locked, and my children and I have gone to bed. I can't get up to give you anything. I tell you, even though he won't get up and give him anything because he is his friend, Yet because of his friend's shameless boldness, he will get up and give him as much as he needs. So I say to you, ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, 
and the door will be open to you. For everyone who asks receives, and the one who seeks finds, and the one who knocks, or to the one who knocks, the door will be opened. What father among you, if his son asks for a fish, will give him a snake instead of a fish? Or if he asks for an egg, will give him a scorpion? If you then, who are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will the Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? Now, he was driving out a demon that was mute. When the demon came out, the man who had been mute spoke, and the crowds were amazed. But some of them said, he drives out demons by Beelzebul, the ruler of the demons. And others, as a test, were demanding of him a sign from heaven. What, what, what does this mean, sign from heaven? Basically, like, you know, make, make a, 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 um, a change the sky to blue or, or you know, some sort of like uh, bring down lightning right here or whatever it happens to be. Right. Did I say change the sky to blue, change the sky to purple. I don't know. Green? Something else. <laughs> Look, it's a miracle. The sky's blue. Um, all right, so verse 17 here. Jesus, knowing their thoughts, told them, Every kingdom divided against itself is headed for destruction, and a house divided against itself fails. If Satan is also divided against himself, well, how will his kingdom stand? For if you say, rather for you say, I drive out demons by Beelzebul. Well, if I drive out demons by Beelzebul, by whom do your sons drive them out? For this reason, they will be your judges. If I dr drive out demons by the finger of God, well, then the, thing, the, the kingdom of God has come upon you. When a strong man, fully armed, guards his estate, his possessions are secure. But when one stronger than he attacks and overpowers him, he takes from him all his weapons he trusted in and divides up his plunder. Anyone who is not with me is against me, and anyone who does not gather with me scatters. When an unclean spirit comes out of a person, it, it roams through waterless places looking for rest, and not finding rest, it then says, I'll go back to my house that I came from. Returning, it finds the house swept and put in order. Then it goes and brings seven other spirits, more evil than itself, and they enter and settle down there. As a result, that person's last condition is worse than the first. As he was saying these things, a woman from the crowd raised her voice and said to him, Blessed is the womb that bore you and the one who nursed you. He said, Rather, blessed are those who hear the word of God and keep it. As the crowds were increasing, he began saying, This generation is an evil generation. It demands a sign, but no sign will be given to it except the sign of Jonah. For just as Jonah became a sign to the people of Nineveh, so also the Son of Man will uh, be to this generation. The queen of the south will rise up at the judgment with the men of this generation and condemn them because she came from the ends of the earth to hear the wisdom of Solomon and look, something greater than Solomon is here. The men of Nineveh will stand up at the judgment with this generation and condemn it because they repented at Jonah's preaching and look, something greater than Jonah is here. No one lights a lamp and puts, puts it in the cellar or under a basket, but on the lampstand, so that those who come in may see its light. Now, your eye is the lamp of the body. When your eye is healthy, your whole body is full of light. But when it is bad, your body is also full of darkness. Take care, then, that the light in you is not darkness. If, therefore, your whole body is full of light, with no part of it in darkness, it will be entirely illuminated, as when a lamp shines its light on you. Now that gets confusing, so I'm going to read the note on this. Um, we'll go to the note from the Reformation Study Bible today. So, the lamp of your body. When the eye is functioning correctly, the body receives the benefit of light. Quote, is full of light, is a... Uh, a cross reference from, or it can be cross reference from Psalm eighteen twenty eight. 
The people seeking a sign do not need more light, but better receptiveness to the light they already had. What God is doing in Jesus is plain enough. They don't need any more than that. Verse 37. As Jesus was speaking, a Pharisee asked him to dine with him. So he went in and reclined at the table. When the Pharisee saw this, he was amazed that he did not first perform the ritual washing before dinner. But the Lord said to him, Now you Pharisees clean the outside of the cup and the dish, but inside you are full of greed and evil. Again, he's eating at this guy's house. A lot of people would say, Don't, don't ever do this kind of thing. But Jesus is our example. Fools! Didn't he who made the um, outside make the inside as well? But give from what is within to the poor, and then everything is clean for you. But woe to you, Pharisees! You give a, a, a tenth, a tithe of mint, rue, and every kind of herb, and you bypass justice and love for God. These things you should have done without neglecting the others. Woe to you, Pharisees! You love the front seat in the synagogues and greetings in the marketplaces. Oh, Rabbi, Rabbi! Woe to you! You are like unmarked graves. People walk over them and don't know it. They presume that these people are holy people and that they should be followed, but they don't realize that they're, they're just basically full of greed. To them, doing the, the work of a rabbi is just a job, a way to earn a living. One of the experts in law, the other translations read this as a lawyer. That's all it basically means. He's just an expert in the law. Answered him, teacher, when you say these things, you insult us too. Then he said, woe to you also, lawyers, experts in the law. You load people with burdens that are hard to carry. And yet you yourselves don't touch these burdens uh, with, with one of your fingers. Woe to you. You build the tombs for the prophets, and your fathers killed them. Therefore, you are witnesses that you approve the deeds of your fathers, for they killed them. I just lost my spot. Ah, they killed them, and you build their monuments. Because of this, the, the, the wisdom of God said, I will send them prophets and apostles, and some of them they will kill and persecute. This is from... Why would it be in 1 Thessalonians? Why would it be? Oh, I guess just showing a reference to it. That's all. So that this generation may be held responsible for the blood of all the prophets shed since the foundation of the world. From the blood of Abel to the blood of Zechariah, A to Z. See how he's doing this here? Who perished between the altar and the sanctuary. Yes, I tell you, this generation will be held responsible. Woe to you, experts in the law. You have taken away the key to knowledge. You yourselves didn't go in, and you hindered those who were trying to go in. When he left there, the scribes and Pharisees began to oppose him fiercely and to cross-examine him about many things. They were lying in wait uh, for him to trap him in something he said. And that is all the notes. So, God willing, we'll be back tomorrow. Behold, the word of the Lord.